Hey guys, welcome back. It's Josh from the Tina team and following on from our last video where we showed you how easily you can spin up your own site with Tina CMS. Today, we're gonna have a look at how to deploy with Tina Cloud. Not everybody should have access to the code of your site. This is where Tina Cloud comes in. It gives you the ability to provide people access to only modify the content rather than exposing the core logic. So that when I ask my designers to go ahead and pre up my homepage, all I have to do is give them access to the Tina editor via Tina Cloud rather than sharing the entire GitHub repository with them. Let's have a look at how we can set this up now. Awesome. So I've got the site that I spun up from the last video, which will be linked above me if you've missed that. And now I want to go ahead and actually push this to Tina Cloud, deploy it on Tina Cloud. So what actually is Tina Cloud? Well, it's a hosted data layer for Tina CMS. It is essentially the best way to run Tina CMS in production as it provides hosted GraphQL endpoints for your content, Git integration, user management, and the editorial workflow feature, and a lot, lot more. So what's my first step? Well, I'm gonna go ahead into my terminal and create a brand new GitHub repository via git init. I'm gonna go ahead and then add all my changes to my staging by git add asterisk. I'm then gonna go ahead and make a commit message. I'm gonna commit and my message will be initial commit. Awesome. I'm then going to go ahead and jump back to my browser. I'm going to open up github.com forward slash new. And I'm going to create a brand new repository in GitHub. Let's call this Josh's site as well. And for now, I'm just going to keep it on public. I'm going to go ahead down to the bottom and click on create repository. Now, once that's created, I'm going to scroll down to where it gives me the instructions for pushing an existing repository from the command line. And I'm going to go ahead and one by one copy in all of these commands and run them in my terminal. Now that we can see that the commands have fully run, let's go ahead and refresh our browser. And we should see all the code from our Tina site now in our GitHub repository. Awesome. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead now is navigate to Tina Cloud. You can do this by going tina.io. In our navigation bar, we can open it and we can go all the way down to my Tina Cloud. Click on that. I'm going to go ahead and log in with GitHub. Now that we're in our Tina Cloud dashboard, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm selecting the correct organization, which is just my personal one for now. I'm going to go down to the big blue create project bar. Click that, and I think I want to import my site today. So I'm going to click on import site. I'm going to authenticate with GitHub. It's then going to ask me to connect my GitHub repository. If I scroll down, I'm not actually seeing my GitHub repository in here. This is quite a common issue. A quick fix for this is going down to the bottom link where it says don't see your repo, configure your tina.io permissions on GitHub. I'm going to go ahead and click into this and open a new tab. It's then going to say where I want to install the Tina Cloud app. Because I made this repository in my own private repo, I'm going to go ahead to Josh Berman and click configure. And now that I'm in here, we can scroll down and we can see that repository access has been only selected to certain repositories. So I'm going to go ahead into select repositories and I'm going to go ahead and look for my new one that I've just created. Click on this, that's the one I just created, and I'm going to click save. Again, now I'm going to authenticate with GitHub again. Now that we're back at our Tina Cloud repository selection, I'm going to go ahead and click on the brand new repository we just created, Josh Berman at Josh's site. And now with authentication, I'm going to keep the project name as Josh's site. And for now, I'm going to go ahead and put my site URL in as just my local host. However, if you have your production URL, this is where you would put it. And I'm going to go ahead and create project. Awesome. So now that Tina Cloud has successfully created our project, what do I have left to do? Well, we can see here that there's a project setup checklist and it says I've only completed two of the four things needed to actually finish it off. So let's scroll down and find out what I've got to do next. So it says I need to set up Tina Cloud's authentication by configuring the API URL, then log into my site via my URL forward slash admin. So now I'm going to go ahead and open up my, my site in Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to go ahead, 
to the Tina file and look for our configuration file down here. It seems that we're calling a series of environment variables needed to actually set up our site. So let's go ahead and set these up. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to our hosting provider. Today, I'm gonna to do it with Vercel and show you how to set up your environment variables within your production site. What you can see here is I've got Tina Cloud on the left-hand side and I've got our Vercel deployment on the right-hand side. Within our Vercel deployment, I'm gonna go ahead into the top right bar, go to settings, down to environment variables, and I'm gonna scroll down so I can add a key. The first key is gonna be our next public Tina client ID, and I can grab that value straight from Tina Cloud. And our second one that I'm gonna go add is our Tina token. And I can grab that from our token section in Tina Cloud. And then I'm going to go ahead in the bottom right corner and click redeploy to redeploy our site. Now with our site redeployed, I can go ahead into our Vercel project, which I scroll up into the navigation bar, find project, and I can set up my production URL with Tina Cloud. So I can go down until I find where my site is being hosted at, copy that domain back into our Tina Cloud. I can go over to overview, I can scroll down to I see site URLs. I'm going to click configure and I'm going to add this URL to our list. And from what I remember earlier, it said that I needed to log in with the forward slash admin route. So if I go ahead and type forward slash admin, and now I'm going to head back to our overview section of Tina Cloud. We can now see that our project checklist says we've now completed three of the four items where we've got a tick on our login through your site section. So let's go ahead and finish off our checklist by making changes to our production site using the Tina editor. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to and to save our changes, I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And what that's going to do is that's going to push a commit by the Tina Cloud entity up into your GitHub repository. And let's have a look on our Tina Cloud side now to see if that's registered. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page again. And if I scroll down, it looks like our project setup checklist is now complete. Let's have a look at what that looks like in GitHub. Now that we're in our GitHub repository for this site, we can see at the top here that there has been a commit made by clicking save in our Tina editor of the last content change that I've made. Let's go ahead and have a look if this truly is the correct commit. We can see here, the changes to my headline have been changed from this is my brand new site to this is Josh's awesome new Tina CMS site. And just like that, we've set up our site with Tina Cloud. And that wraps it up for today. I'm Josh from the Tina team. And today we went through the four step checklist on how to deploy your site with Tina Cloud so you can better manage your site's content. See you next time. Bye.